Welcome to Poppy's Garden. <laughs> How's it going? So, these are my trees. My, my little orchard, as I call it. And last time you were here, these were just little sticks. These crab apple trees and there's a story behind these crab apple trees I, I planted them for a reason we used to have three cats and uh, I still have one is his name's Catacle her but I had Blackie I had old kitty and they both died well they're in between the two trees uh, they were my buddies so that's their marker and and these things bloom this year like, like crab apples, you don't eat them or anything, but the flowers on them are absolutely gorgeous. Like you can still see where they actually bloom. Like this whole thing was just, just pink. The whole thing was pink and then the crab apples come. But it was just beautiful. Like when they, when they blossom in the spring, it's probably one of the prettiest trees you ever saw. So this is the peony bush. We had it up at the front of the house the wife didn't like it. Too many ants. I didn't want to kill it. So, down to the back. So, th that's in there. Peony bush. Comfrey. And in here, raspberry. It was only a stick when I put it in there. Look at it. It's taken off. And I see this. Yes. Raspberry coming up here. Nice. In, in the last video... You see my compost piles. I had just actually started them. So that was almost a month ago, right? Or oh, maybe two months, eh? Because there was snow then. It was cold. It was raining. It was cold. So uh, this, this is my apple tree. This is the oldest tree I got. This thing struggled for years. It's coming back nice now. I pruned it there uh, last fall and the year before I pruned it. She's coming nice. She's open. She hasn't given me any great apples just yet. And uh, this tree's got to be going on eight, eight and a half years. But she's going to come. I'm still hoping. <laughs> I'm still hoping that this tree will come. I, I'm going to prune it again down this year. Last year I had a few apples. Uh, it wasn't bad. This year, it, it don't look so good. But we'll see. I mean, the tree itself looks fantastic. The tree looks good. But it's, it's, it's not... I think it's... Still, it's got too much foliage. I'm gonna to have to cut some more out. Maybe it's 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 growing good, but it's, it's not producing. It'll so come. I'm I'm gonna see. There's a branch there I might cut out. The big branch here. It's, it's like a, an, another leader. This branch here, I may cut this out. Get rid of it. We don't really need that branch. So we're gonna see. Then I got the comfrey. I have comfrey all around. The fruit trees all around them. And this, I think this is my favorite pear tree because it started out to be five different pears. And now I and I cut the rest out. And now I got the one. I tied it up probably yesterday. This used to be here. I cut them all out. I cut them all out here. It used to be uh, four other pears. It was five altogether, but Really, if you're going to buy buy something like that, don't buy that. Because it, it doesn't work out. I've, I've bought them twice and, and, and they don't work out. And this is another thing I like. I like the leaves. They're so nice and shiny. But this stuff here, straight up, I'll, I'll cut this out. This will all come out. Anything that's straight up, I'll uncut out. But it's, it's still small, eh? It's going to take maybe two years for that to thicken up. And then, but last year, I think I had uh, two or three pairs off this. I haven't looked at it close, but there's probably, there's probably one or two pairs here. So that's, that's, that's okay. That's good. And if you notice around my trees, I didn't point it out before, but this is all garlic. This is all garlic. This is garlic. I always put it around the trees. 
I, I think trees like it. This is my peach tree. This tree has been fighting me for eight years. Leaf curl. This is the first year the leaves are actually nice. It has a, it has a touch of it. But last spring I sprayed and this fall I sprayed. So, look at the leaves now. The leaves are nice. So, this tree may, may be okay now. So this is an option for the peach leaf curl is that there's a um, an organic control method which is a copper based spray. That's what I use, the copper based spray. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's inorganic methods that you can use as well um, that are tend to be fungicides because it's yeah. a fungal disease, but right. um, you can try a copper based spray as well if you want an organic method. We use to copper give spray. it a try. Yeah. And so far so good. I mean it, it has trouble. I'll cut this out, but I don't want to cut it out just yet. It, it may be okay. This is all new growth from last year. I trimmed this tree down. Like you wouldn't have believed what this tree looked like last year when I trimmed it. I left hardly any branches on it and it was bare. This tree here gave me some beautiful peaches, but it hasn't done it since because of the leaf curl. It's been trying to survive. So it hasn't been able to put out any fruit, but if the leaf curl is gone, next year this tree will produce. This should be a good tree next year, and so should this one. It should be a good tree next year. I think I've got it under control now, I think. This is my elderberry, and you can do a lot with the berries. Elderberries are rumored to give people upset stomachs, and some places even say that the berries are toxic. Um, but the more you look into it, there's not any actual scientific literature that says anything about that. Now, um, if you look up elderberries on plants for a future, so elderberry PFAF, put that in your Google search bar and read more about it. There's two good research papers there that talk about the toxicity of elderberries. And uh, from what I can tell about it, it's highly debatable whether they even are toxic at all. But to be safe, just don't wild forage a whole bunch of them. You can cook them, put them into jams and syrups. And uh, I know lots of people who do just eat them raw and swear by it. But just to let people know that there is that concern floating around out there. But we also do need to back our concerns in science. And from what I can tell, there's actually no scientific basis for that. But it's always good to be aware that there are concerns of um, the plants that we consume. And a hash cap. This is a hash cap. It's, it's just a young one, so there's nothing on it right now, but next year this will give me some. This will, well, there's a couple here, if you look here closely. Do it right here. So next year, this will be, when I first got this, it, it was like this. So this is two years old. So this is doing well. This kind of likes it here. And this is my garden. And these here are freeloaders. They're, they come up on their own. So figured I'd leave them there. He calls volunteers freeloaders. Yeah. <laughs> I like they're, it. They're freeloaders. <laughs> so I'm going to leave them here. See what happens. I'll just let them crawl over. and see. Because I, 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 they all look the same. Like pumpkin, uh, spaghetti squash. Uh, they're, they're all similar. So I'm not sure what they are. I think they're spaghetti squash. Because my wife threw out a spaghetti squash. And I put it in the compost. And then I dumped it here. So I think they're spaghetti squash. But we'll see. Anyways, then we'll come around. I remember last time I talked to you, I used to have potatoes in my garden. And I tried an experiment. But this is the experiment. I put them in buckets. When you came last time, there was, they were planted, but you couldn't see them. So the experiment was, I put some in the ground and some in the buckets. You can tell which ones are doing better. The ground ones are okay. They're not bad. But the buckets are flourishing. They're just flourishing. Like they just seem to love it. And then in this bucket over here, I have sweet potatoes. Uh, I undone the slips myself. They struggled at first, but I can see now that they're, they're coming back. They're starting to grow. They're coming. So we're going to see. And then I got another bucket on the end. 
I'm going to put the sweet potatoes in that bucket too. And we're going to see. Now, my guess for the buckets is that because we're actually a cold zone... It keeps them hot. It, it keeps them warmer. So yeah. you got sun hitting the colored buckets, warming the plastic up, waking them up sooner. So I have a feeling that's, that that's probably you're probably right. Yeah, because the buckets keeping it warm. Yeah, I have a feeling if you're in Florida, this is probably a terrible idea. If you're in a right. colder climate, give it a try and do it like this, right? Run an experiment and see. Yeah. I'm I'm seeing what is going to be the better one. So far, the buckets, the buckets are actually winning. So I I don't know. So it actually might be really interesting to see if um, during harvest time you get more potatoes out of the buckets here because it's one thing the plants doing nice it's another thing the actual potatoes getting more of a harvest out of the buckets. Um, typically the bigger a plant grows the more solar panels it has the more energy it has available to it and then at the end of the season it's jamming all that energy into the roots making more, more potatoes. However It'll be interesting to see if um, there's enough space in those buckets for the harvest and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so this will be a fun follow-up video in the fall to see if the bucket potatoes uh, make more actual potatoes or if the ground potatoes make more actual potatoes. Now if you look, there's not too much room for them to go. It just goes into some grass. So um, there's other volunteer potatoes in the garden over here. And those might be interesting also as a third comparison where they, they have a lot of fertile soil that they can really creep into. So that'll be a fun thing. Maybe a couple of months from now we'll come back, check out the harvest on those potatoes and see which one of those experiments worked out the best. Then I planted something for my wife. She loves pumpkins. So I planted cooking pumpkin and that's, excuse me. That's these up here. These are cooking pumpkins. So they're, they're growing pretty good. I got them mounted pretty good. They're all right. They're doing okay. Move on down the line. I got radishes in, in the ditch. These are radishes. They're coming up. I figured why waste the space? Fill them in. If I don't, he will put them in there. And I've got asparagus. This is the second year for it. It's still little, eh? The asparagus is little. It's coming up. So, I didn't pick none. This is not doing too bad here. Asparagus in here. It, and it, it, it spreads out because uh, this one was only just one plant. And now it's four. It's four plants now. See? So, it, it's doing good. Uh, and best time to plant asparagus was five years ago and the second best time is today after you watch this video exactly. so um you know these are two years old and you're not getting anything from them now but this spot is going to grow asparagus for the next 25 years so get it going and this spot you see here two years ago this was just compost it was just scraps i i actually put in there so this whole area almost two and a half feet with stuff I took out of the garden two years ago and threw it there. Now I'm planting it. And tell me about this garlic. That garlic is huge. <laughs>